So, A, I, don't, I think if they do, if PlayStation does decide to make PS6 incompatible with PS5 games and, by extension, PS4 games, otherwise people will wonder, like, what the hell they were doing with the PS5. I guess it was the magic SSD. But anyways, here's hoping they do. First of all, I'm going to say that right now. I do not hope that Sony does anything other than what they should with backwards compatibility, which is implement it fully, I would say. Like, don't do it so that... It's not only backwards compatibility for the previous generation. Have it be like, hey, if you if you own the newest PlayStation, then all of the PlayStation library is open to you. You know, like you you can play any game from this entire company because these are all the games that we own the publishing rights to, at least on these platforms, and we can sell them to you whenever. The way I think Nintendo should also have with the Switch. There's no reason why there should be any, any game on Nintendo Switch that, or sorry, game made for a Nintendo platform that you cannot play today on Nintendo Switch. I, I think it's silly like that that's it. not the case. Sorry. Because you know where that is so the case? Long. PC. And I'm talking about Nintendo games. So, when you're from ultimately, it's like, oh, you should, yeah, Even don't bother emulating. You can just sign up for Nintendo more. Online. It's like, well, okay, I'll rent them from Buy Nintendo for a, a ridiculous the charge every month and not be able to just install them and play them whenever I want forever because that's how I like to buy video games. I like to generally know that I can install them and play them forever. Now, that's not the case when they take stores offline. I'm aware of that, so... I don't need to be told. I find it sad enough. It's silly that any company restricts what of their products you can buy at any given time. I think when it's digital products we're talking about here, right? Like so. There's no restriction on how many copies of Super Mario Kart they can let you download. <laughs> Unless they say there is. And if they say there is, they're just doing it to say there is, right? It's not. <laughs> they don't actually have a great argument. It's just like, well... You can't buy Super Mario RPG. Why not? Because uh, we're about to sell it to you in a remade form. Like, okay, well, that's not a great reason, to be fair. That's that, that's really not an awesome reason that we can't own the original, because why would I not want to play the original and the remake? Is the remake that similar? And you could argue, yeah, it's just a straight remake with better graphics. I'd be like, okay, what if I want to play the original version with the original graphics and then see how much better the new graphics are? Well, you can't, so I guess you're totally out of luck because there's zero other option. And then I can just be like like a drug purser coming up, and I'm like, you know, you can just emulate it on PC, dude. It's not even hard. <laughs> and would it be nice if there was a, like, a, a formally licensed institution that could sell people Nintendo games so that they don't have to go black market for them? Or like, I mean, at the very least, even black market, um, what would be the word for it? Uh, playback. Because even if, even if you could say like, okay, well, I acquired this illegally because I had a copy of the game and I, I have a, a console that lets me extract ROMs and get things into digital format while using the original cartridges. And it's like, oh yeah, okay, fair enough. But you're still playing it by means by which Nintendo would not support. So ultimately it's like, well, I mean, so is it not black market, kind of? Because it's not like you can go to Nintendo and be like, hey, yeah, Nintendo, I've emulated all your games. I grew up with them. My dad maybe made me a little Raspberry Pi emulator when I was seven, and I just played a whole bunch of old games, and I, I love them. I had all the Nintendo games. They'd, like, give that kid a cease and desist or sue him. <laughs> I wish I was wrong about that, too, but I'm pretty sure that that's exactly what would happen. <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating that time. That's not hyperbole. I think they might actually sue that kid if he publicly stated that he's only ever emulated their games, but that he's played every Nintendo game. I think they'd make the case that like, okay, this kid has stolen, let's make a rough estimate about when he, wh how old he was at each of the times that he would have played those games and what those games would have cost and how much Nintendo has suffered in damages as a result, and they would sue the guy. <laughs> Now, Nintendo, if that's not how you would react, why do I believe you have that reputation? See, the thing is, though, Trev, it's not, um, not that you would have to have things working on old, strange architectures. You just have to emulate, em, em, 
implement perfect emulators on your new consoles that can run everything your old consoles have ever released. That's it. And people that are not getting paid to code emulators have managed to write perfect emulators of every Nintendo console, including the Switch. The only thing that's not perfect about Switch emulation is sometimes you have to you have to not try to push it to 60 FPS because of the way the games have coded if they're 30 FPS. Which, I mean, honestly, that's not too bad because ultimately you can always still play the games the way they were originally supposed to look. It's just when you're trying to actively make them better than the best they could have ever looked, some roadblocks get put in your way because that sometimes makes some of the games on Nintendo's consoles, not just Nintendo ones, some of the games fall apart. Which, I mean, you know, that's a, that's a con consequence of development. That's not really Nintendo's fault. But at the same time, it's like, don't tell me that Nintendo especially can't get working emulators that support all their games. Uh, been, like, running on their new console before that console is even announced. Like, it just needs to be a requirement. There needs to be a team that is just working on emulators for the next console. And not just at Nintendo, at Microsoft and Sony as well. Otherwise, there's no point in playing on console. Like, I think I will almost go as far as to say that much. That if they don't care about you enough to respect the money that you've given them, I, I almost don't think they're worth supporting in the first place. Now, I mean, I get that that's a hot take. Don't get me wrong. I'm, <laughs> I'm not planning everyone to, like, wholeheartedly agree with me on that. But I really find it insane that... For all the PS4, I mean, which granted is the generation which I started playing on PC. It was in the PS4, Xbox One generation that I started really getting back into PC gaming in a big way. Because PS3 and 360, I was pretty much only on consoles for that, that entire time. I was doing a lot of military training and, <laughs> uh, and even before that, just the contract video work so i was i was editing with like 90 percent of my spare time i played on 360 and ps3 just because gaming wasn't as big a part of my life back then but i started getting back into pc gaming around 2015 2014 and then that's led me to where i am now but one of the things that really pissed me off about the ps4 and xbox one generations they were just like uh yeah, at least on P playstation xbox was pretty good about backwards compatibility to be fair but playstation was just like yeah um, we're just gonna release remastered ps3 games and you're gonna have to buy I'm at uh, yeah, pretty much full price again. And then like, <laughs> it's like, well, I mean, that's not really cool, man. Like, can you not just credit us for these purchases because we bought this game for full price last year, The Last of Us? But no, it's like, no, no, you'll just you'll just need to pay us what what we're asking anybody else. No, no credit given for anyone who already owns this game. You have to pay full price or you have to boot up your PS3 every time you want to play this game. No other options. And I'm like, well, that doesn't feel awesome. And then I found that the easiest way to play something like Vanquish at 60 FPS was to just play the PC version when it came out. So I was like, okay, well, I'm waiting on this PS4 version of Vanquish because I loved it on PS3 and would love to play it, ah, crap, in a situation where it's running better. But I... I don't necessarily want to have to buy it again on your platform. You know I own it on your platform already, so why are you charging me again? Well, we've made a new machine, see, so you have to buy access to this game on the new machine. Because you had access to this exact same game last year at full price on the old machine. But now we have a new one. PC games that don't work on uh, PCs for modern PCs for various reasons. Yeah, but I mean, most of the reasons is because those games haven't had the time taken on them to properly port them to modern operating systems. But generally, you'll have things like DOSBox, which can upload, uh, which can boot up any MS DOS game. So old games from the 80s and 90s that were MS DOS, not Windows games, or they were Windows games that just launched a DOS executable and fired it up in DOS. Every one of those games can be played because people coded DOSBox in order to do that. Now, I'm sure Microsoft doesn't have a great interest in you being able to emulate, I don't know, Windows NT games or Windows XP. Wherever they did the games for Windows Live thing, just because they were like, okay, we don't necessarily want you to be able to use this stuff as readily because all of this stuff is stuff we're trying to resell. And I think that's just as BS. But that's why having a non-platform holder, or at least, I mean, I guess outside of Steam Deck, like Valve, 
who are only concerned with software for the most part and are only dabbling in a hardware bit. They've got a VR headset that does not have any exclusive software and they have a, they have a portable PC that they've just specced out themselves, which doesn't have any exclusive software. <laughs> like at that point, it's like, well, I mean, I, I don't think they would try to sell you Half-Life 2 again because Windows 11 just came out uh, because they have no interest in doing that. It's just, they don't have a new machine they need to sell you. So they might as well make it so that the, the software that you pay them for is as valuable and a long-term purchase as it could possibly be. If a game can launch on the operating system you're running, then cool, you can, you can definitely use that software. I mean, yeah, sure you do now, uh, Hyperbolic Ninja, but one of my concern is that if the next console, because apparently some PS5 games are being pretty hard to port to PC, which makes me think that maybe they did do some PS3 and make it kind of a difficult architecture to actually work on unless you're developing software specifically for it, that if you're doing any kind of general software development, your PS3 games are just not going to work on anything else properly, which, by the way, is now becoming less of a problem because the RP, R, uh, RCPS3 emulator is uh, RCPSX3, I think. RCPSX3. Yeah, I believe that's what it's called. But uh, that emulator is in a pretty stable state right now. I was playing Armor Core 4 on it, and it works uh, pretty well. Like, solid 60 FPS the entire time. Now, the most complicated game, and I've never been able to get Metal Gear Solid 4 running on it consistently. It runs on it about the way it runs on a PS3, but Metal Gear Solid has an unlocked frame rate. Metal Gear Solid 4, sorry. So I, I keep on feeling like there's got to be something I can do to this to get this thing at a locked 60 FPS, but I, I could never get that to work, but can't do that on PS3 either, I suppose. So. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, it's kind of unfair to hold it to that standard. I just hope that video game hardware manufacturers respect your software purchases and they don't just decide ah well these suckers will probably pay it again if we just call it a remake last of us part one <laughs> when it's really just a texture back on the original game with the ai from the second game copy pasted over to the most most uh, to the advanced difficulties in the game that it doesn't affect normal mode at all so if you if you play last of us on normal you are not getting the benefit of that new ai and the only reason I bring that up is because I feel like a lot of the people who are defending that remaster as a remake are the kind of people who don't play video games for the game part as much as the movie part. Which, you know, that's your deal. Cool. I mean, it's cool that people have different ways of enjoying this medium. I just don't like it when the people who prefer games to be more like movies than like games, people start making decisions about what games should be designed like. You know, like it's, it's like, hey guys, could you maybe... Can you maybe not start telling people that we, we want easy modes to be in everything because that might destroy entire genres built around providing a challenging experience? Not that I'm playing one of those games right now or anything, because that would be silly. Why would I ever do that? Those games are for those nerds in their basements with their puppies. And I got disrupted again. Jojo, that one was your fault. The, the thing is, though, I don't think they would need to recoup costs to develop a PS3 emulator because they have all the source code. They have all the things they would need to create a perfect emulator. They've just spent no time doing it. And people working for free just because they like PlayStation 3 have done it. I doubt they will ever raise the price of a console. I think it's just a standard that should be demanded. You pay more by then having to resell you a whole bunch of the games that you loved. Because you probably won't want to just replay them on PS3 when you can play them on modern hardware, you know? Especially if we're talking about a PS6 game. Like, The Witcher uh, the Witcher 3 on PS4 will never look better than The Witcher 3 on PS6 does. Because CD Projekt tends to, for all their faults, let people just upgrade to the new version for free. For, like, for the purchase of the original game. Right? It's not free, I suppose. You already did pay for the game. But they don't make you buy it twice. Neither does any store, which... I mean, even like, uh, I guess the Xbox Live game store is kind of getting towards that point, too. But I mean, likewise, I'm pissed when they do stuff like that on PC as well. Like, I bought Dark Souls Remastered because it was the one that was out when I wanted to play Dark Souls on PC. But 
the original release of Dark Souls on PC, you pretty much had to download DS Fix in order to play it because it was a lazy port. And I think that that shouldn't be shouldn't be accepted either. I think that that's also as ridiculous because again, if the guys who made DS Fix can figure out a way to make Dark Souls work on PC properly, why couldn't the people porting the game from From Software who are being paid? Like, I think it's less about a budget allocation issue and more, what are the people you're hiring actually doing? You know, because if, if you have 500 people working on the look of the UI, like, <laughs> of the, like, the, the, the splash screen, the OS, you could call it, of PS5 or PS6, whatever, whatever. Like, it, how many people do you have working on that? Because I'm willing to bet it's more than, like, two or three. And two or three people have made the R RCPSX3 emulator. And I do not believe that the graphic designers that are making the user interfaces for these consoles are getting paid, like, minimum wage, right? Like, they're not... They're definitely not working for free, and they're probably making a decent amount of money. Which means you could probably hire people for less money to do that stuff that ultimately doesn't matter, because... I hate to say, as much as you like all the, the nice sounds and, and themes and everything, ultimately, all you do in the PlayStation UI is launch your games and download your games. That's really it. You don't really do that much there. <laughs> you could argue that maybe you throw on some music and listen to it, sure. But I mean, I don't know, man. Like, Winamp was doing that a long time ago. It's, <laughs> it's not very hard to have a music player. And they could strip out probably a lot of the things that make it seem comfortable and flashy and like it's an Apple product and spend a bit more time, I don't know, making it so that people can play PS2 and PS3 games on there. Or PS1 games at the very least. Like, come on. <laughs> it's it's kind of crazy that you can play PS1 games until, like, last year on, on PS4 even. And, I mean, Trev, you have that PS3 now, but that PS3 is not going to be functional forever. It, uh, that's that's flat out the case. It uh, will likely have something go wrong with it at some point, and acquiring a new PS3 might be more and more difficult to do as time goes on, and more expensive. For example, I mean, you could probably get a PS3 pretty cheap these days, but try getting a GameCube for a good price. That uh, <laughs> tends to be a little more difficult. At the same time, I mean, you can do it, but also then you gotta get some uh, HDMI, uh, sorry, not HDMI cables, because that's not really an option unless you get a third-party adapter, which you're spending more money for. If you don't want to just be running in the most standard definition that the GameCube was capable of, you're going to need to find component cables. Now, those were only made by Nintendo, so it's not like you can just go get generic component cables like you could if it was, say, I don't know, a VCR or a DVD player. Or even a PS2, actually. I think the PS2 just had... Uh component inputs on the back. No, 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 PS2 had, a, had an actual thing. It was PS1. It had, like, the proprietary Sony one. But what I mean is I think that when a hardware manufacturer makes a line of products, they should make it so that their new product always can play the software of their previous product. I don't think that should be that hard to do. And I think the only way that it becomes easier, <laughs> or, like, the easiest way to make it not hard to do at all is just... Don't ever radically change the core concept of how your machines work. Make them consistent, but stronger. And I mean, if you think that you need to radically work how things are, it's like, okay, well then, was your last machine just Because, I mean, people aren't going back to the drawing board on, on building PC parts and how they interact. Like, not, not every company is deciding, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna not have this x86 stuff be a part of our thing windows 11 is going to require everyone buy new computers i just don't think that would go over well okay new operating systems have system requirements yes that is true but how far back do you have to go in order to find a version of a computer that is, that just tells you okay you need to buy all new software now not just a new operating system but all new everything <laughs> it's uh, you're probably going back to like Windows 3.1, Windows 95. Like I feel like it's it, it's not it's not a short amount of time you're going back before all software is incompatible. Like generally, they try to make things be compatible from generation to generation for PC hardware because it would be very complex if they didn't. But they're also, for the most part, d dealing with very similar types of architecture between generations, which is what lets them be incrementally improved. Pretty much every year or every other year, or depending on what the company is and how often they're releasing new hardware. But things tend to not involve you needing to buy all new software. And I think if, if they ever said, okay, well, now you got to buy a new copy of 
Microsoft Word and a new copy of Blender, the way that they kind of get you with those things is subscription services, in which case, uh, be careful bringing that up in defense of consoles. They, uh, they tend to like you on subscription service to do even basic functions of your, your, of your console, like, for example, playing a peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer game with your friends. And by peer-to-peer, -peer, I mean not dedicated servers. So there is no reason why Sony needs to charge you to have peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer per game that you have paid for, because they're not doing anything. It's the the, the software developer servers that you're playing, uh, that you're communicating on, and you're playing on one of each other's PCs or PS5s, whatever it would end up being. So it, it's kind of ridiculous that even Microsoft still charges for online play. If they wanted to, if they wanted to really gain a lot of ground on Sony, they should say, yeah, I think because they know that it's a good lead into Game Pass, but they should say, hey, Game Pass is what you get when you subscribe. There's no Xbox Live Gold at all, and I think that that has already happened, that they've just turned it into like Game Pass Basic or Game Pass Silver or something. There's no charge for online play though. So if you do subscribe, you get access to a wide variety of games, but you do not have to worry about paying for online play if you just want to buy a disc and play Call of Duty with your friends. And I, I think that that would have been a good move for them that they still have not done, but I, I think charging people for online play to me is insane. I don't, I don't know how anyone gets away with it anymore, especially because Sony wasn't doing it for all of PS2 and PS3, which means the only reason they did it is because they saw a real opportunity to make people believe that there was a good reason for them to do it when they got hacked. That's why they charge for multiplayer. It's not to make their servers more secure because what happened a month ago? Sony got hacked again. It's not, <laughs> they're not all of a sudden impenetrable. It's, uh, I think they, they've spent, they've spent a whole lot of time investing in things other than internet security, it seems. But they've been charging you for online multiplayer the entire time. When, for a good chunk of PS3, char paying for online multiplayer is nothing anyone had to worry about. So I, don't know, I think that's kind of. Argument seems to be about respecting user purchases, but those purchases weren't made when the new hardware existed or what they promised to be supported on. Yeah, but it's digital software. It's digital software and you're talking about making art. You know, you don't just say, okay, now that, I don't know, now, now that HD is a thing, you need to upgrade all of your Netflix accounts. Oh, I guess, I mean, Netflix does do that, right? Okay, so I guess uh, Apple would be the better example because I bought a lot of digital movies on Apple. And when they started doing 4K, they did the smart thing. We're just, yeah, every movie that's available in 4K, if you already own it on iTunes, you have it in 4K. You don't have to specifically buy the 4K version. Because that's the way that you should be respecting purchases of your customers. There's no reason for them to buy your new thing if they otherwise have a perfectly working version of the one they have, unless they want their other things to run better. And generally, that's why I would be buying new consoles. Because I'd be like, okay, I would like for the games that I have to be played a little bit better, and I would like for new games to look nicer. And that really didn't happen on PS4, but I found that when I moved over to PC. You know where that did happen though? PS5. So clearly they, they realized that they pissed some people off by doing it in the first place. So I think, I honestly think it's kind of silly to advocate against backwards compatibility though, because it's like, why, why would you not want there to be backwards compatibility? And uh, I guess I don't say because you can make more money as a, as a valid reason, because I'm like, I think, I think that's a really good reason why people shouldn't support your company at all. I don't necessarily think that nickel and diamond people and getting them to buy products that they've already purchased are, is really the best way to treat your customers. I think that, if anything, you should sell them on reasons why they should continue to support you and, you know, uh, and purchase more things from you. <laughs> like... Because that's ultimately what they want, right? They want you to be a repeat customer. Uh, my argument is that they won't be doing all the development for free, and they will need to update it every time they make a new machine. But I guess that what 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 I guess you don't understand if you, if you don't use emulators on PC is making an emulator isn't really that difficult to do. It generally happens pretty quick, and if you have the specific engineering data for the console and you know exactly what you're trying to train that program to do, there's no reason why you can't have it happen very, very quickly. Which means, again, the second you have your specs set, you just need to, a team of like five people, 
that otherwise would have been doing like I don't know QA on The Last of Us Part Three that you could just have hey I'm trying to make your whole console better by having it not not seem like a giant value sink because all of a sudden now you've got a different console in the spot where your other one used to be on your TV in your same HDMI spot because especially if you have more than one console that you support it can be pretty difficult to keep every generation of every console hooked up if you just want to like say oh i have the ps3 if i want to play the ps3 games it's like well is it hooked up is it even do you know what it's functional when's the last time you used it i mean i'm not saying you in particular but a lot of the people that i think might make the claim of well i have a ps3 though i'm like have you thought about that because i mean i i, I honestly know that there's several people who make that argument that i know they've not played their ps3 in a very long time won't mention anybody but he might be responsible for a company called geeks and gamers that <laughs> will flat out say well i have this machine if i ever want to play it and then if you call him on it, i'll be like yeah it's not been hooked up in years but you know it's in the closet i can always get it i'm like you're never going to though like you just won't <laughs> Well, I think that in 360's emulator not working well, I mean, it's kind of crazy to think. I honestly think that the compatibility list for the 360 games is 100% them just not, not having licensing rights that allows it to be backwards compatible because they weren't planning on it. Honestly, I, I seriously think that that's the deal because the Xbox 360 emulator that's on Xbox One is awesome. I don't believe that there's any games that aren't compatible on it. I, I just don't. I believe there's games that will not boot because they made it so that you needed a specific game supported feature to have that emulator function. But I honestly think the reason for that is most likely legal, if I were to guess. But uh, it is a guess. That said, I know that the Xbox 360 emulator on PC, as well as the PS3 emulator on PC, work pretty well, and neither of them have access to engineering data nor people who actually worked at the companies really i mean i guess they might but uh, that would be that person deciding okay yeah, i worked at microsoft during the 360 development and sure i'll help you with this emulator because i think it's a fun tech thing to do not because they like are passionate about it necessarily but, or i mean not because they would need to because if they're still working at microsoft as an engineer they have no reason to want you to have be doing better work than they are. So I don't know. I think it's I'm, I'm always skeptical when people make arguments against backwards compatibility because it, it sounds like propaganda, which is work to me every time. Every time people say like, oh, you can't make an emulator just that easily. And I'm like, but people do, though. Is my understanding that the Xbox One emulator just downloads a modified version of the game and isn't really emulating? Well, but if that's the case, then why do they have compatibility list if it's just if it's just running the the core software natively then it shouldn't have any compatibility list at all because then that means the xbox one architecture can just boot those games without any emulation necessary at all any way you slice it if every game doesn't work it is an emulator it's just you could be like oh well it's doing it in a way that isn't like the way software emulators do it be like okay well why does it have a compatibility list then does that mean it's not as good as a software emulator because i mean again i'm not a tech expert i'm not an engineer but that's kind of what that sounds like to me like it sort of sounds like hey this is uh this is this is doing this differently it's like okay well does it do it as well no, but you know, it's it's doing it doing it legit, you know, like no fakery. Be like, hey, well, if we use software emulation to make it more fake, but it looked better and ran better and played better, is that an option? It's like, well, yeah, but then we're not doing it the real way. I'd be like, you're fired. I mean, so it's a different machine than you need software in order to emulate software that's not compatible with it. You would need a compatibility layer at the very least, which is emulation. It's uh, like the compatibility layer for Windows software on Linux that Steam Deck uses is called Proton. So that's a compatibility layer, but you could argue that what that is is it's a Windows emulator that's running every time you boot up a Linux game using Steam OS. Because what it's doing is it's firing up a little fake Windows for a second to tell the computer, yeah, here's where all these files are and here's where they need to go. And then it closes that and just launches the software. So it's nothing running in the background. It's just basically creating an emulation layer that create, you know, like allows it to be compatible with new software. It's tricking the computer into thinking it's a different kind of computer than it is through software emulation. 
a code that has been written by people that is constantly being updated too. Proton has new versions coming out weekly. And you can actually opt into using experimental layers too if you want, if you want to boot something that is not on Linux or not being supported by Steam Deck yet, or it isn't on Steam. Like if, uh, if it's a GOG game that you want that's having some Linux compatibility issues, someone might've figured it out and they might've added that to the, to the Steam compatibility layer and that might make it, or sorry, yeah, so the, the, the Proton Windows compatibility layer. And um, that might be the reason why it ends up working for them because they, they just basically decided to use experimental software for a moment. <laughs> but at the same time, I, I think the engineers working on that stuff are heroes because they're making it so that the layers of compatibility we have between operating systems on Linux and Windows are becoming less of a hurdle for people to play video games if they own a different platform or a different setup. And I mean, yeah, the list of base Linux users is probably pretty small. At the same time, I think that it's cool for Windows to have competition like that because all of a sudden gamers don't necessarily need to install Windows. They could install Linux if they want and they might be okay doing that. Either way though, Trev, I just, I hope you know that I'm not, uh, I'm not mad at you or anything. And I sometimes might sound mad if I'm, I'm passionately arguing a point, but I'm just uh, passionately arguing my point. I've just, I, I've worried that sometimes when, I, when I'm speaking passionately is when people might think I'm kind of a d <laughs> and I swear I'm a pretty nice guy. I mean, not very nice to, uh, to, to this, well, monstrosity, let's face it. I'll be even more of a d Now I'm being a d Wonder what happens when Pinocchio acts like a d <laughs> What gross. Anyway, I'm also not anti-backwards compatibility. I'm simply prioritizing buying a new console, meaning better hardware and lower cost over the ability to play old software. I, I, yes, although I just, I, I, I don't know. I still, I still think that the waste you should be concerned with lies elsewhere. <laughs> and I think there's a lot of it. I think there's a whole lot of waste in the game industry and particularly amongst console, console manufacturers. Because I think that they get away with the most stuff, so they they do the most heinous shit generally. And I mean, again, Steam's got a console, or Valve's got a console now, so maybe they'll be they'll be in that group soon enough. But at the very least, they still seem to be pretty good about even making uh, Half Life Alex available to play on MetaQuest or or Vive or Windows Mixed Reality headsets. So they didn't have to do that, and they, and they did, because I think they want people to think like, oh, well, if you buy this game, you should be able to play it on using whatever hardware you want, you know? What if you, you, want, to, you want to buy our game and pay us to buy our Steam game? You don't want to buy it twice if you buy a new headset, or you don't want to buy the Valve Index. You, you already have an HTC Vive or whatever. You can just run it on that and they and they let you and i think that more companies should be doing that and i think that actually call of duty will probably be the reason that microsoft starts actively doing it outside of minecraft oh yeah you know don't worry trev and if you're slow to respond that's fine also i do have people come on with voice sometimes and I, sometimes i worry that when i do that playing a game like this that i'm just i'm not going to be able to play the game <laughs> I, I i can focus and every time i have a moment i can look over and read and then focus for a minute and hopefully be safe and not die 